Well, hello there, my fellow rushers. How you been doing today? King Rex here. And recently, we reached 800 subscribers. Thanks a lot, by the way. Thank you for making me get this far. Your support is very appreciated. And I decided to give you something special for today. This idea is very heavily inspired by Coziness's champion difficulty. And I decided to make one in Origins, which is gonna be called Master Difficulty. Do you have what it takes to become a master in Kingdom Hearts Origins? Well, we'll see about that. But before we continue, I want to give a big shout out for to Red Warrior for making this beautiful picture. And yeah, it's time to get into the rules and explain what Master Difficulty is all about. So yeah, before we begin, I have four main reasons as to why I created this difficulty. The first reason is to balance up the game. Number two is to make the game challenging and more intensive. Number three is to make it pretty good and beatable on most difficulties. I have replayed it at least multiple times on Normal, Veteran and Impossible. And I know what I'm talking about. I haven't played it on Casual though, so I can't confirm how hard or easy it will be on this difficulty in particular. And my fourth main uh, reason is to make it use to make it pretty balanced on all versions, including iOS, which is gonna play on some of the restrictions on the heroes that I've made, which we're gonna get into. But before that, let's get into the star upgrade restrictions first. So yeah, now for the archers, the elven training and bloodletting shot are gonna be banned. You're not gonna need them. They're pretty broken in my opinion, and they make the game a little bit too easy. You still have the obsidian heads, which is gonna make the archers pretty effective against non-armored enemies. But, because of the oven training missing, their abilities are gonna be slightly less good. And you, you can rely on that good old bloodletting shot, which is gonna give you a lot of unfair advantages in my opinion. So, because of that, I'm gonna restrict this one. For the barracks, Moon Forge Blades and Blessing of Eleni are also prohibited. You're not gonna need them. That extra magic damage? A master is not gonna rely on some baby numbers. He knows what is going on all the time. No matter how hard it may look at first glance, he will do it. And the Blessing of the is just small RNG help, which a master in King Rush Origins does not require. And it's, I mean, sure it happens very rarely, it only has 10% chance of occurring whenever a unit dies, but still that's a little bit of an unfair advantage, so I'm gonna remove it completely. Moving on to the mages. Unstable magic and alter reality are also no, not allowed. It's pretty obvious. I mean, that small chance for triple damage? No longer available, man. No longer available. And also the teleportation is banned for obvious reasons, because you're not gonna get these extra clutch teleports all around the globe. It's not gonna happen. However, it's gonna make one mage pretty good now and more useful. And we're gonna touch on him later on. For now, let's move on to the artillery. Heavy load and smoky, uh, sorry, shocking impact are both prohibited. The artillery is not meant to do true damage. That makes it pretty much awesome against every enemy that's not flying. And even if it's a flying enemy, you still have archers to take care of him, right? Oh yeah, now the artillery is not going to be as desirable for heavy armored enemies. It's not going to be a get out of jail free card because you do true damage. No longer will that be happening. And the shocking impact is just nah. That 50% slowdown for a brief moment is not gonna be needed, not at all. For the Furious, now for the Lightning Strike, the Furious Tempest is gonna be banned. No extra Lightning Bolts to help you out clean up the field, that's not gonna happen. Now, and the damage is gonna be slightly reduced, so it's not gonna be as good of an emergency button. You have to be a little bit precise with your timing of the lighting. I was thinking about buying the moon, the moon soon upgrade as well because that it also doubles the wind slowing effect, but it makes the lighting a little bit too weak, and only really good players will be able to use it properly. So, in order to make it good, to make the, the lighting still good for the newcomers, I'm st I'm gonna ban only the Furious Tempest. Now for the reinforcements, I banned the Moon Sentinels only. I was thinking about buying the reinforcements even further, but it's gonna make them a little bit too weak, and they kinda have to be good for this game, because there's a lot of tough enemies early on, and you're gonna need some good reinforcements, and they're still pretty good, but they'll not be as strong in the early game as they used to be. They're gonna have 50 HP less, they're gonna have about 20% less armor, and, they, and their damage is gonna be reduced significantly. So now you have to be a little bit careful, the reinforcements are not gonna be your safety net, or they, they can be your safety net, but they'll not be as helpful for every situation like they used to be. 
So hopefully that's a good balance, and that's all about the upgrades restrictions on the stars. And now let's move on to the upgrade restrictions on the towers specials. For the Arcane Archers, Burst Arrows is completely banned. You're not gonna need it. That's in order to favor artillery, in order to use artillery more often. That's why I banned Burst Arrows. The Slumber Arrows are okay. You know, even if you max them out, you're not gonna get a Permastone or anything. So they're still useful from time to time when you have a bunch of tough enemies surrounding your defense. They have a use. And plus they can reduce magic resistance, which is a pretty good ability. Passive ability, to be more exact. For the Golden Longbow... The Crimson Sentence is completely banned, and Hunter's Mark will be reduced up to tier 1. The reason why I banned the Crimson Sentence is because it's a little bit too strong, and I don't feel like it's gonna be good. I mean, you can just spend 900 bucks and watch watch this tower getting insta kills left and right, which is pretty not which is not good for Master difficulty. A Master will, doesn't have to rely on RNG from the towers. He needs to know what the towers are gonna do all the time. And the reason why I banned Thunderous Mark up to tier 1, or I restricted it up to tier 1 to be more exact, is pretty simple. Because it on iOS, it doesn't work, the upgrade is bugged, and it doesn't work past the first upgrade. So giving you upgrading it up to tier 2 or 3 is gonna give every other players besides the ones who are playing on iOS a big advantage. So because of that, only tier 1 will be allowed. Now the barracks. They were probably the hardest one to balance out, but... I feel like I got a pretty decent-ish restrictions. For the Blade Singers, the Blade Dance will be completely banned. Because they're meant to be great blockers. They're not meant to be a bunch of killing units that can annihilate hordes of enemies. They're meant to block tough enemies and help out against crowds. And that's about it. They're still gonna be reliable blockers, but they will not be as good for damage. Making use the next barrack, which is Forest Keepers. And for the Forest Keepers, they're pretty redundant on iOS, so I had to make quite a few restrictions to them. For example, the Circle of Life is completely banned, you cannot use it. Because on iOS, it, it only gives 40 HP regeneration over 5 seconds, regardless of what tier the ability is. So because of that, it's going to be completely banned to make uh, iOS players have a um, fair chance at beating this difficulty. The Eerie Gardener will be allowed, even though it's slightly weaker on iOS, it's just a little bit. It's like by like five extra five extra points of damage, which eh, it's not gonna make too much of a difference. And for the H and Oak Spears, they're gonna be ba restricted up to tier 2. Tier 1 was a little bit too harsh of a restriction, and because of that I had to increase it up to tier 2. Now, just because it's not, you're not gonna get the max damage out of the Forest Keepers anymore, that doesn't mean that they're not gonna be useful. They're very good. And that also makes them be more useful with Blade Singers now. Now that the Blade Singers don't have that Blade Dance ability to clean up hordes of enemies, you want to combine them with the Forest Keepers. And that way they can cooperate, they can work with each other to create a good defense. And the Forest Keepers still have their moments. They're still a useful tower on some levels. Now for the Wild Magus, the Eldritch Tomb will be restricted up to Tier 1. That's in order to make you to reduce the fact that you have to basically remove area damage. Now I can't remove it completely because even a tier one it still does some magic area damage. But now you're not going to be able to wipe out a small horde of enemies with that insta kill. So yeah, I mean it's meant to be an insta kill. It's not meant to be annihilating hordes of enemies, right? But now, unlike the golden longbow where you have to rely on RNG, this insta kill is consistent, but it's on a long cooldown, 28 seconds to be more exact. So you have to engage into the gameplay and think which enemy I want to get in front of the other. Which one will get faster? Which one has better mobility than the other? Who should be at this point at this point in time and in the, into the game? Basically, you have to think a lot in order to get a good insta kill now. You can't just rely on RNG with the golden longbow. Now for the high oven mage, the arcane sentinel is gonna be banned. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. I really wanted to allow it, but on iOS it's very weak. And th that's gonna give Steam users and, you know, Switch users and Android users pretty big advantage. So because of that, it's banned. The time lapse, I'm gonna allow it. Even though it can stun enemies, which makes the barracks slightly redundant, it doesn't. Don't worry. It can only stun up to four enemies, and I barely find myself using it. But it still can be useful, especially on the World Health Outskirts Iron Stage. It turned out to be pretty good. Now for the Arc Druid Henge. For this one, the Rune Bears are gonna be completely banned, because, you know, I want to make barracks more usable, and the Sylvan Curse will be restricted up to tier 2. The reason being is that 100% extra damage just 
across the near the enemy that's affected by the sylvan curse is going to be a little bit too much but then again a tier one it's going to be not that useful and without this ability this tower is complete garbage so because of that tier two i feel like it's a good medium and now last but not the least we have the weird wood and it's pretty simple the clubber is completely banned you're not gonna need it it deals too much damage and it can stun a lot of enemies which is pretty pretty broken the firing note will be allowed up to tier three but the thing is that it has a very long cooldown, and you have to use barracks in order to maximize the damage out of the firing nut. So yeah, you have to be a little bit creative when you use the weird wood now. You can't just spam clobber everywhere and annihilate hordes of enemies anymore. That's not gonna happen. But still, the firing nut is a useful upgrade. You just need to be very precise whenever it, whenever you see that the firing nut is go going to be activated. You have to be prepared for it. And now, last but not the least, we also have the hero restrictions. There's only six heroes that are going to be helping you out throughout your journey. We have Arivan, Razen Rax, Lilith, Rexon, Vesnan, and Zin. These are going to be your heroes that you can use throughout this difficulty. Now, the reason why I picked them is pretty simple. Arivan and Razen Rax are pretty much identical to one another on iOS. Same for Vesnan, Rexon, and Zin. However, Lilith is slightly different on iOS, mostly description, but the description is incorrect, so it doesn't actually affect the gameplay by any means. But the thing is that the Heavenly Chaos has a little bit of an advantage. Usually, um, I think it's something to do with the upgrade system on the Heavenly Chaos. For some reason, even before you upgrade it up to tier 1, it still deals 800 true damage. So that's going to be sl a slight advantage for the people who are playing on iOS. But considering the fact that you can level up your hero very quickly, it's going to be a small advantage for a very short period of time, so I'm still going to allow Lilith. Because I want to give you a fair amount of free heroes to use, because some of you may not have the premium heroes that I listed. And I mean, Eridan, for example, his Nimble Fencer only has half percent chance of occurring on iOS, making his efficient HP very bad. And Kata's ultimate has very small AoE, so she's not as useful. So I feel like that's a good balance. To give you a quick briefing on what each hero is good for. Arrivan is very good on a level where you have a lot of uh, different enemies with different types of resistance. Because he deals true damage, he deals e explosive damage, and he deals some magic damage as well. So he's pretty useful for those. But remember that he's still pretty squishy. So you have to be careful when you use him. For Razen Rax, they're pretty good if you have a singular choke point. You can stow a lot of enemies with him if you use the change link properly. You can also make cheese some levels, if you know what I'm saying. Which is pretty nice. And the change link can also help you out to recharge your lighting. You, you may be having an enemy leaking and you want to stop him. Just change him into a ragdoll for 10 seconds. And after these 10 seconds you may get your reinforcements back. You may also get your lighting back, which is going to be even better. So Ryzen Rex have their uses. They're not a useful hero, not at all. Lilith, even though she is mostly RNG, I'm letting her in because, as I said before, she's by far the most e equal, he like the most uh, balanced hero when it comes down to iOS. Because, as I said, Kata and Eridan are very redundant on iOS. So Lilith is the only good one. And even though she's RNG, she is very, very good on some levels. I wasn't able to get past one level for like eight times in a row, and I was using Arrivan. But I switched up to Lilith and I beat it first try. I don't know how, I guess a good RNG. Sometimes that's what you need with Lilith. If you get the right RNG, you can make it through very hard levels. I'm telling you that. And I'm gonna keep my promise. That's the way it is. For Rexon, he's gonna be pretty good at killing off weak enemies due to the Eldritch Blade. He's gonna be pretty hard, durable due to the fact that he can, he can steal some HP from nearby fallen enemies. And his Vindicator will be pretty useful on some heroic and iron stages, which you're gonna be encountering throughout the game. So yeah, he is a pretty good hero. And don't forget that his basic attacks deal true damage. No matter if you have the Eldritch Blade activated or not, his basic attacks deal true damage. Every 0.6 seconds. So he is pretty useful. Good old Adi Vesnan. He is your pure magic damage. And beside him and Arrivan, you don't really have good ranged heroes. Which is gonna be a little bit problematic on impossible mode. But they're pretty good. Now, Vesnan has the same issue as Arrivan as being very squishy. And unlike Arrivan, Vezan is pure magic damage, but he also possesses a pretty good insta-kill ability, which you have to use properly. Now, you may be thinking that the Dark Pact is a little bit of a too strong, and indeed it is. It is strong, 
Demon that has a very good attack, doing between 80 to 130 true damage per shot, is pretty good. But because he has such a long cooldown, you have to be very precise with your timing, because if you misuse him, you may not get him for multiple waves in a row, which could be very detrimental and crucial for heroic and iron stages. So because of that, I'm still gonna allow Vesman because of the high, the high skill level that he possesses. And last but not least, we have Zin, who is kind of an average hero, you know, he's not terrible, even though Voduk makes him up to be pretty bad, he's actually not too bad. Sure, he may not be the best option, but he has his moments. He's not a useless hero. That Pandemonium ability could be very helpful. The Inspire is actually not too bad if you combine him with Tier 3 Barracks. And he still has the Darting Strike, which could save you. And he has this Pseudo Teleport with him, with it, which is pretty nice. Also, don't forget, since this is going to be... Master difficulty, you have to beat every campaign stage without losing any lives. You, if you lose a life, your class fight is dead and you have to restart. Or you can play until wave 15 and then restart if you want to get a better understanding of the level and how it works. And I will recommend you starting on a new save file just so you can keep track of your progress. And now for the optional stuff. We have a few optional things that you can do. The first three heroic and iron stages are pretty much identical to one another in a, to any normal game, so because of that, you can do them if you want to. They will not count towards your main completion. Now also, Galadrian's Wall is also optional. This level is already very rough in a normal game. And with these restrictions, it proves to be pretty cl close to impossible. Like, it's really hard to get past the, the last three waves. And you need near perfect micro. And it takes even a skilled player a long time in order to complete it. So, in order to not give you too much guff, you can beat this level normally. And then you, you can progress. And then get ready for Blood Quarry, which is even crazier. <laughs> and now, for the Steam users, there are a few things that you need to that are also optional. Which are the Iron Stages for the post game. They are completely optional, because they re re they're relying on you pretty much using specific upgrades and certain specials, which are banned. So in order to give you some help, I'm gonna give you a few advantages. On, if you're doing the Iron Stages from the post game, you can, I'm allowing you to use the Burst Arrows, I'm allowing you to use the Moon Sentinels, and any hero you want, as long as it's not a flying one, because, let's be honest, it's gonna make it a little bit too easy. And speaking of Steam users, turns out that Blood Quarry and Beheader Seed on Impossible are a little bit too harsh for this challenge, so if you're gonna do them on Impossible mode, I'm allowing the Moon Sentinels only. That's literally all you need in order to make the, the difference. And it's still pretty challenging throughout, throughout the level. Both levels, actually. So yeah, guys, I know this is a lot of information, so I'm gonna post all of it down into the description of the video, so you can watch, so you can read it and understand all the rules, or even write them down if you want to. And yeah, guys, well, with that out of the way, that's gonna do it for the video. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. I appreciate you for sticking around to the end. Subscribe if you want to see more of this content in the future. And while you're at it, drop a like on the video. It means a lot to me. And I will see you in the next video. Until it comes, that was King Rexy, over and out. And now, let's see if you can become a master at Kingdom Rush Origins.